Okay, so welcome to uh, the Lunch and Learn for this week. We're revisiting one of our previous topics, uh, invoicing and receipting. If you recall, if any of you were here for our very first week uh, that we did Lunch and Learn this year, that we did invoicing and receipting, but we covered everyone, both GPs and specialists. This week, we're very specifically narrowing into just invoicing and receipting in the case of the general practice. So if I can make sure um, that everyone makes um, make sure that their microphone is muted by clicking on the little mute um, symbol on the right hand side there. And uh, yeah, as it says, feel free to type any questions in the chat section as we go along. Uh, we'll either answer those at the end of the webinar, webinar if we have time or any more complex ones, we'll answer via email afterwards. So jumping over to ZMED here, billing and invoicing in ZMED. Just, oh, by the way, you can also click on your little orange icon at the side of the screen if you want to maximize the size of your screen. So the billing and invoicing here, most commonly at a GP practice, this will be done by the receptionists. We'll be doing it out of the waiting room. So the waiting room here is obviously used for a variety of different things, including attending the patients, um, and doing the billing. We really advise that, for, that folks do use the waiting room for the billing because there's a variety of extra features and he helpful, useful features that come into play that are only used if they use the waiting room there. Perhaps what we might do is we might also quick attend a patient into the waiting room here. Let's go up the top here to quick attend. This is if they're normally you'd be attending a patient through the appointment book as we've shown you in other lunch and learns. But just if there's a patient who's a walk-in, we might just use the quick attend up at the top here. Say so quick attend. And we'll put this patient in here. We'll say that yes, he's going to see um, perhaps Kramer there. We put that patient into the waiting room there. You can see that this patient's a little bit different from the others because it doesn't have an appointment time. And the specific one, like a few of the others, haven't been admitted to see the doctor yet. Hopefully most of your clinics, um, the GPs out there, will be using their ZMED um, from the doctor's end as well. So you'll see that some of these patients here have been admitted by the doctor and the doctor's left notes for the billing at the end of the line there as well. When we come out or when we do the doctor's training, obviously not coming out at the moment, uh, when we do the doctor's training, we train them to use the waiting room so they can send the billing information back via the waiting room as well. So when a patient does initially turn up and you attend them, one of the things you do want to check, let's go into the patient details here, this has implications for the billing, you'd want to come down here and run online PV. If you click online PV, that will check that their Medicare card and expiry date uh, is correct there. Presumably it won't work for this one here because we've got a test system. Let's see, okay. And yes, obviously in this particular case, it's a test system, so we don't have a valid number in there, uh, but if you click, if you rem, um, have your staff always remembering to click online PV for patients when they attend, that will save a lot of drama later on when you come to billing. It was so you can make sure that the Medicare card is right there. So we close that particular patient there and back to the waiting room. Yeah, so it's good to always when you arrive them there to check them while they're waiting. But as we can see that at least two of them there at this particular clinic, perhaps they the doctor is trained up to properly do the admitting section through the waiting room, but at some of them they won't. So let's go in and do billing. Um, let's see, for Eric Banner, for instance, we can right click on the patient there, go down to bill. Oops, I clicked on the wrong one. I'm going to do it for Eric Banner. Bill, here we go. 
got the payer's name up the top there. Now, if this is this bit, the first question is, is this particular payer um, getting bulk billed or are they pay, paying privately and then getting a rebate from Medicare? So up the top here, if they're paying privately and getting a rebate, you'd pick their name. If they were getting bulk billed, you'd want to pick Medicare. Now, potentially for some pay, for some patients, you might find they're not currently, they don't have Medicare in the list of payers there. You can always come to the right hand side here and do add edit payer. So we just pretend that Medicare wasn't on that list there. We can do add new, click Medicare, and then select, and that will add Medicare to that list of names there. So you must know whether they're being bulk billed or whether it's a private pay, where they're paying privately and getting a rebate. So in this particular case, we'll say that they're getting private, we're getting, they're getting um, bulk billed. So obviously in this particular case, our test system doesn't have bulk bill, doesn't have Medicare numbers for them. We'll ignore that. So here we go, Medicare, the right doctor there. And let's just jump down to the service items here. This is where we put in all of the different service items uh, that they're being charged for. So uh, potentially it might be an ordinary 23, for instance. You can tap across to just make sure that that gets added in, see the description and everything there. Let's click add on that one there. Let's perhaps put a healthcare plan like a 721, for instance. Once again, a tab will fill out the rest of the details showing the description and everything there. And then we can click add on that one there. Now, because this particular one is being bulk billed, we're sending it straight through to Medicare. We'll be coming down to this button here and clicking suppress. Suppress email and print actually do all of the same thing. So suppress means save that. Somebody's going to batch this and send it off to Medicare later on. So suppress, you can think of as meaning save. Email, emails it somewhere and does the save. Print, prints out a copy and does the save as well. So practically all of those are the same thing, but suppress just saves it, whereas the other two saves and prints it or saves an email. Most of the time, unless there's a particular reason why you would need um, to get a printout at this particular stage um, with the bulk billing, you would just use the suppress option here. So we'd click suppress and later on, um, the practice manager or another member of staff will be batching everything together and sending it off to Medicare, which we covered in a previous session. So let's just keep, click suppress there. No, that's normal. It's just a, something on our test system. And then it saved that there. You'll notice it's now removed Eric Banner from this list here because he's been billed. Everyone will remain on this list until they've been billed. That's how you know whether they've been removed. Let's do another patient here, for instance. Russell Crowe, should we say? Um, actually, we'll take one of these ones that's had billing information sent through from the doctor. So let's say Rose Byrne, for instance. We'll click on her and click bill. So you'll notice in this specific case, down the bottom of the screen, so like we saw before, there's instructions sent through from the doctor, rebook three weeks, bulk bill. And there's also some codes that the doctor sent through. So instead of us needing to manually type the numbers in, we can just directly add those in from there. We'll make, make sure first that it says, let's see, it says bulk bill down the bottom there, or come up, make sure it's bulk bill there, yeah. So doctor there, and we'll click add all. There you see, it's added in the items there automatically. Put them into the account there. So we can now, just like we did before, because remember this is being bulk billed. Um, we can, and you, you can always, you can always double check some of these with the doctors, but this is the idea is if they're using the waiting room, they've sent the codes through like this, that they, they've picked these from a list. So these are most likely to be the ones you need. You come down and then click suppress. Okay, now I was going to show you a private bill uh, one here. So if we go into Russell Crowe, for instance, 
and click Bill. So in this particular case, we'll keep the patient's name up the top and not Medicare. So this is if the patient is paying it for themselves, there's a gap and they will get a they will get some refund back, rebate back from Medicare. So if the patient's name is not on the list up the top there, you can come to the right hand side, add edit payer. Go to add new there, select patient and select and it'll add the patient's name to the list there. So in this particular case, the patient's name is there already. So patient's name, the doctor, we skip down. Let's see the item in this particular case. Maybe we have a, a 36 for instance. And you see in this particular case, we've got the fee next to the doctor here, it says fee P1. So Dr. Costanza, we were actually being seen by, well, this is supposed to be Kramer there. I know maybe we're being seen by Dr. Costanza. And you'll see there's, you pick the particular fee level there relevant to that particular doctor. And you see it puts the value in there. And if we click up the top here, we click, um, Medicare here. <laughs> it's reminding us that this particular patient doesn't have the Medicare um, card on them. Card on them. But if you tick this one here, it will show you what the rebate is for that particular item. Anyway, so we come down the bottom here. Instead of clicking suppress, which we would do for a bulk billing one that we'd be sending straight to Medicare, come down and click on Quick Pay. Okay, so here we go. This is the screen where we put the patient's payment on. Now, if you had an FPOS machine, so you click one of these options first, so cash, check, FPOS and so on. If you were taking it by FPOS, you'd click on that. And if you had an FPOS machine, you'd also be clicking that little ET button there. Uh, sorry, if you've got a Tyro machine connected specifically Tyro. Obviously, if you're taking FPOS, you'll have an FPOS machine, but the Tyro ones are directly integrated with ZMED. So let's say we don't have an integrated one because I don't have one to connect to this computer. The right-hand side here, yep, $90. It presumes we'd be paying the full rate for that. We can click Add. Now, if the patient did happen to have some overdue amounts, from other places, we'd pick one of these other options here. So perhaps there's other family members who some reason had extra payments in the system waiting as well. In this case, we're just paying for this particular invoice. We could either um, pay the full rate or if we'd had their Medicare number in here, it would show um, the gap amount here. And so you could, if you're one of those sites where you're just wanting them to pay the gap, you'd pick this last option here. But in this particular case, we're gonna pay the full amount and then send it through to Medicare. So we click add there and then seeing as we've added that one in there now we would go down and we would click ma online that will send it directly through to medicare online in this case i'm just going to click cancel because obviously i'm not connected up to medicare online I'll click suppress as you see it's removed that one from the list as well there one common mistake that people make with some of these ones. We're going to billing Paul Hogan here. So they'll put in the particular item there, for instance, and they will go straight. And so this is a private payment one, but they'll go straight to the MA Online option, which means that this will be sent through to MA Online um, as an unpaid one. It'll be sent through at a um, at a private rate there, we'll see on this particular one, because this in case we've selected Medicare, we'll see this particular item. So they're supposed to be getting an estimated refund of $38, but a gap of 21. If you forget what you're doing and, and you um, instead of clicking on quick pay, you click on this tempting MA online button down the bottom of the screen here, it'll send it through to Medicare um, unpaid, and uh, they'll send you back a bit. Please explain on why you didn't get there, collect the, at least the gap fee first. So it's always important if you're doing private payment to come down and do quick pay here. 
see again, there's this option that I was trying to show you before. So you can either pay the full thing, including the gap and then get the rebate or get them to pay the gap first and then Medicare themselves will pay the rest of it. So that one there, remember, so it's grayed out because we have to put in the amount here first, like FPOS, and then we can do the add and click MA online and that'll send it through as a paid one. Cancel for the moment there. Now, another option we have, if we open some of these pay patients here, I'm just opening the patient's account for Isla Fisher here. On the top right here, you'll see that we have a family section. So you can see various family members within this family. You can add other members into the family by clicking on family links, and then either doing add an entire extra payer there, or we can um, just, so you, that would be add payer, just do new and put the whole patient file in there. Or instead of that, you could come down and do quick add and just add as a quick way to add just a whole patient file in where the, where many of the details in, whoops, I might just uh, mute that person there. There we go, just mute that person there, cool. Um, uh, yes, so, and by default, if you use this add patient, here, this quick add patient, it will assume that their Medicare number is um, very similar, their address is similar, in a very quick, just sort of one line way of adding in the pa uh, an extra um, family member into the patient there. Now, the reason why I showed you this section here, is if we go back into the waiting room and we build Isla Fisher here, to remember, right click, bill, we can at the same time, let's put another item 23 in there. I'm doing this private bill. We can come down to this option here where it says family down the bottom of the screen there. We could say, yeah, we actually, they've brought another family member in with them as well who wants to, um, who's been seen by the doctor. So we can also select one of them and it will bring up an invoice uh, for them as well. Let's see which one we've got there. Uh, what's it saying? Provide a number. <laughs> well, that's normally the option uh, there that we go through. Obviously, in this specific case, <laughs> it's not allowing us um, uh, through for that one. Uh, so let's see. Okay, entire family voice. Let me just try that one again. So put in the invoice for her there, add that one there. Oh, there you go, so it's asking us again. Let's say, Pete, I am, okay. I think it was um, having a problem with that particular patient there. So now it's changed over to Pete Fisher there. And maybe that was 36 on that particular, that particular patient. Once again, you see the set to Medicare, estimated refund and the gap there. We add that one in and you can see it says family invoice two up the top there. So now you'll see this one was a unit value of $90 there. If we come down and quick pay on this one, you could see it's added uh, the $90 for this particular invoice and the $60 all together. So it's done the two payments, the one for Peak Fisher and one for Isla Fisher at the same time. So once again, we can come down to FPOS, add that one in. And then now that that's been paid, transmit it through to MA Online. So I'll just cancel out of that one. Excellent. So that's how to that's how to do the family invoices there as well. Another one of the invoices. Let's go back into perhaps Paul Hogan again there. So potentially we might be halfway through one of these bills. And uh for some uh, ridiculous reason, I don't know, it hopefully shouldn't come up all that often. Um, you have to quickly switch to doing something else on your computer. You can come down to this option here, defer, which will temporarily make a draft of this particular 
invoice. So we've put a 36 in there, but we're not ready to click quick pay yet. So we'll click defer there. So what we can do later on, if we've deferred one, if we're coming back to that particular patient, so let's type in Hogan there, we'll look him up. Can come back, you can pick up that invoice again by clicking up to bill up the top there. And as you see, it says deferred invoice found for this patient. Would you like to continue to work on it? Yes, please. And it reopens it back where we were there with the 36 on the particular patient. Let's remember to change this to Medicare up here. Oops. We will need to go into that. Uh, change that one there. Let's see. Uh, in some of these cases, you will, particularly in that case, I forgot to switch it over to Medicare. So that just shows, helpfully shows the estimated refund. Uh, it, it doesn't force it to go to um, a fund instead of Medicare. So just in this specific case, um, as you saw in those other cases there before, if you select Medicare, it would have shown the estimated refund for Medicare. It's just the estimate. So it's only when you actually send off to Medicare and get the refund, do you get the proper value there. So that was the default, the defer option there. Uh, let's see what we head off to now. So we've seen how to, to create the invoices, how to put the payments on it. Now I'll show you how to, um, some of the changes that you might need to do at the back end of those ones there. So let's see, Eric Banner was one of the patients that we've processed today. So if we go into his account, into his account inquiry section there, you might see a number of claims up here. Commonly you'll find that people when they jump into the account inquiry screen will pick all and all from those top two options there, almost as a just a matter of course without even remembering what they do really. This one on the right hand side here, display invoices. By default, it'll only show the invoices that haven't been paid yet. So actually that's quite a helpful default for it to be set on. I know people love putting all, all. If, when you pick all from this side here, it'll show their full history. So you can see with the green tick marks here, it shows the ones that have already been paid in the past and there was something canceled there at some stage. Up on the top left here where people just automatically click all, this can show just the payments that have been, the invoices that have been made to specific payers. So with the ones that have been, the private um, invoices that have been created for Eric directly, or the ones that have been sent to Medicare. So I understand that people like picking all and all because that's a simple way of saying, show us the entire, uh, show us the entire history of this particular patient. You can also, if you're wanting to get more information from this screen here, you could head up to the top right corner here. It says invoice only and full details. You could click on full details there and it will expand all of these options so you can see the particular service items and whatever that are in those. Click back to invoice only to shrink them. You can open individual ones just by clicking on the side there to getting more information. I stands for invoice. S stands for service, so service items. And R is the receipt, the particular receipt number that's been put on it there. Now, there is a range of different things that we can do with these invoices, where we can fix them up and various other things like that. Uh, now, but most of the options, you'll notice that these are greyed out here. Most of the options will only be enabled if you pick the specific payer at the top there. So if we pick Eric Banner, in this case, pick Medicare, you'll notice we've still got, we picked the Medicare one there and that hasn't been paid yet. And we can see from these options here, it's probably, well, if we didn't know the date of today, we can see that it hasn't yet been batched through. So normally at the end of the day, there'll be a member of staff who'll batch, who'll batch it through and transmit it off to Medicare. If it's been batched through, you'd want to have, instead, if you're going considering changing something about this invoice, you'd want to have a chat uh, to the people who do the batching there. As we said, we covered batching in a, a different uh, session there. So this will be just um, modifying the invoices. But if it's the, if it hasn't been transmitted off to Medicare yet, uh, you still have time 
within the same day to change some things you might need about this. So in this particular case, you notice because we selected the payer up the top there, most of these options down the bottom are now available. So one of the options is adjustment, for instance. If you needed to add, remove, or, well not add rather, if you wanted to increase or decrease the price of one of these services, or we needed to remove one of them, we'd go to the invoice there and we'd go down the bottom. So we click the, select the island, go down to adjustment. So you always, to go into adjustment, you always select the specific invoice, the eye line there, but on the adjustment screen here, you pick the particular S line, the particular service that you want to modify. Now, practically the only options that you will need to do on this screen are discount, increase and void. Leave the other options. So if there was a specific if there was a specific service item that you added that was added by mistake that wasn't supposed to be there, you could come down here and you could click on void. So we give a reason there. Click close. If you notice, put a little S on that there, there'll be a line there and it'll also give initials to it, so who, put, who put that particular message in there. You also notice on the right hand side here that the outstanding amount for that particular service item has gone down to zero. And so that, particularly if you've done that the same day before, that's got a claim number, that's okay. If you're considering doing this when there's already a claim number, definitely have a chat to the practice manager or whoever it is who does the batching at your particular site because once it's been transmitted to Medicare it's a whole different kettle of worms. Uh, anyway so that was the voiding one there if if that was the last if there was only one particular service item in this invoice or you or you'd voided all of them it would also void the whole invoice. And that could be a way of just getting rid of it and starting again in case you needed to add extra ones in or had a completely different set of service items. Alternatively, if we select, uh, let's see, another one here. Also, oh, let's just close that there to refresh it. Select it, adjust. We can come down here. You do need to sometimes close out of it if you've made some changes and come back in. You see, we select the service item here. We do have the option to discount that particular service item or increase it. Uh, obviously, you have to have a particular good reason uh, for doing those, but um, generally, if you find that you're regularly getting into the habit of doing discount or increase on some of your service items, uh, that is liable to be some wider problem, like perhaps your items and fees haven't been updated recently. So I'd recommend that you don't regularly use these discount or increase buttons, but there may be time to time that you actually need to use those. So in this particular case, I've discovered that the Medicare fees have gone up after I've created this invoice, the rebate fees rather. So I'll click increase on that one there. I'll say perhaps, wow, perhaps it's gone up by $5. So I've just increased that amount by $5. There you go, the rate's gone up by $5 there. So it's this amount on the right hand side that we that we um, compare here. That's the amount that when this particular invoice is sent through to Medicare, that's the amount that we'll be claiming from them. Now it may so happen that there is other invoices out there. Uh, perhaps in the case of this particular one here, we needed to change something about this particular service item, but it's already been paid. It's a private one that the, pay, that, the, that the patient's already paid. So you can't adjust ones, the service items, when they've already been paid. What you will need to do is you will need to come down to the payment section here. So this just shows the payments on this particular payers account. Select the particular payment. So we're going to need to remove that payment. You select the particular payment and then you come down and do reversal. 
Now, some people incorrectly think they're supposed to be doing refund. Don't touch that refund button there. That's very, very specific uses there. Uh, reversal is the one that said, look, we made a mistake. You know, the patient's right here in front of me and we put things through too quickly. Uh, we need to change one of the service items there and we've already got the payment on the system there. So we'd come down here and do reversal. So reversal is how we void out a particular payment. So I'm going to reverse that one there and say, um, you know, data error. What a good reason there. See, it's X that one out. Now the tick has been removed from this particular from this particular claim here, this particular invoice. So now we'll be able to go in and do adjustment. Let's increase that price there. Perhaps we forgot to put it at the um, doctor's correct private rate. So we're increasing that by $10. So now this particular claim is now up to 60, this particular invoice, $60 there. What you'll now need to do with the, you know, the, the poor patient in front of you who's now discovered they're actually having to pay $60 instead of 50. Um, you will now, you will then need to come down to the bottom here where there's the receipt option. And you'll recognize this screen is very similar to when we're putting the payments through the other screen there before. So you'll come down and you'll pick invoice. It'll automatically assume $60. Yep, that was the amount particular one we're putting through so let's add that one in this particular time because we're coming in and doing a remedial payment we you know had to remove the previous payment putting the new one in we need to come down and do allocate click this allocate button down the bottom can't just do cancel there because that'll just forget it all come down and click allocate and it asks us to just double, double make sure that which particular invoice we're adding it to there should only be one invoice on that list there $60, we come down and click fully receipt there. Gives us the option obviously to print the receipt if we wanted to. Say for instance, we'd click no there and we're saying, oh, but hang on, oh, the patient really does want uh, that printout, uh, apologies, that, that printout uh, because, um, you know, of all of the complication, us getting them to pay $50 and then come back and uh, pay $60 afterwards. Come down into the payment section here. See the cancelled one there. If we wanted to print out that receipt there, we would use this button that says duplicate here. Now I, I understand some people think that duplicate would mean that that invoice would be doubled up there, but um, clicking duplicate prints a duplicate invoice. It'll have duplicate invoice printed on the top of it. It won't be the same as the original invoice. Uh, but that's so you'd know that you don't have a second one to pay. Uh, but yeah, duplicate definitely doesn't double up the options here. Won't work properly if I click on it my screen, but there you go. Do you want to print the receipt? That's the option there. I don't have a printer connected to my computer, but there you'd click yes and it print out. The print option here will print the, basically this little screen here. So it will print the list of payments that you can see on the screen. And you can, if needed, you can adjust this payment date here if you want to see a larger transcript of the payments that the patient's made. Okay, so other options there. We'll close this and open a different payment, different patient. Uh, let's see which patients did I have in the waiting room here. Uh, let's have a look. Remember from the waiting room, you can always, instead of picking bill, if you needed to check extra details on the patient, you can always go into and click patient there. Now, I believe this patient here, if we have a look at Medicare, not doesn't have one there. Well, perhaps by mistake, say for instance, this particular patient, we we're in a hurry and we didn't notice that we'd accidentally put this, this particular invoice through as a private patient instead of a Medicare patient. In that particular case, obviously this one won't get, if you put them through as a private as a private, pay, private invoice, this one won't get picked up by the batching process. So it's very important to reassign it through to being Medicare. So that's when we'd use this reassign button down the bottom here. What it's going to do is cancel this invoice and make a new identical invoice for Medicare. So let's go down and click reassign. And here we go. It's guessed that we're wanting it to assign it to the other 
payer because there is only one other payer for this patient. So reassign it from Simon Baker to Medicare. So we select which particular invoice we're wanting to move across to being a Medicare one. Click close down there. Gives us the option to, if we never intend this particular payer to be to be having private invoices, we can remove that payer as well. But let's just say no for the moment. Okay, so we've reassigned it through there. So you see we're, it's, we've now moved that particular invoice. We can actually see if we set it to the all, all option up at the top here. Uh, we can probably see, I know it's specifically totally removed it from there and pushed into the Medicare one there. So you can see it's now a Medicare invoice, $150. One thing we will want to check, come down and click the re-invoice here. So we do want to make sure, this is why sometimes it's important to do a re-invoice for it, to make sure what the particular fee structure is here. Because you see originally this particular invoice was a private a private patient invoice. So it went through as the private patient fee. So this particular invoice is still showing the fee of P1 there. So we can redo an invoice the way we just did. So re-invoice lets you alter all of the things in the invoice. So you can change the payer, change the doctor and so on. Specifically in this case, we want to change it from the private rate of P1 uh, back to the Medicare rate. And in fact, in this particular case, it's entirely not an item that we want. So let's delete that one there. We'll add in a 36 there, for instance. We could have alternatively, if there's already a 36 there at the private rate, we could come in here and change that to the Medicare schedule rate there. We add that in. Remember, this is now a Medicare one. So we click suppress, and that's waiting to be sent through, uh, batched up and sent through. So remember, we've got reassign. If you're wanting to move it, just move it across from um, one payer, like the private payer to Medicare or vice versa. You've got re-invoice. If you're wanting to completely redo that specific invoice, you see that's what we did in that case. So it cancelled out that previous invoice, allowed us to construct a brand new one based on the same details. Let's have a look at some of the other patients that we did today. You can, if you want to see the other patients by, that have already been billed for today. Remember I said earlier that it only shows the patients that haven't been billed. You can temporarily come over to the right hand side here do show all and you can see the ones with the dollar sign next to them there have been billed already. So what we might do there is well, let's go into um, Rose Byrne for instance here. We go into a patient, account inquiry, Medicare. There you go and remember this is so it doesn't have the particular claim number there so it hasn't been transmitted yet. So say for instance, we didn't need to reassign it because it was on the correct payer. We just wanted to re-invoice it because maybe we'd put, um, you know, it was supposed to actually be a 36 instead of a 721. We'd got them confused with another patient or something dreadful. So let's get down to re-invoice. You can see it's opened up all of those same items in it again, even though this is a brand new invoice allowing us to change just some of them. So perhaps take out the 721 there. Click add to put a 36 in instead. I'm clicking suppress again. Saved it in there again. And remember, I know I've mentioned a few times that I will stress, make sure if you're going to be changing some of these, make sure they don't have a claim number in them already, or they will need to be removed from the batch before being modified. And you might need to remove them from Medicare as well. But that will be something you'll need to discuss with whoever's doing the batching. Uh, I think that's all that we needed to cover at this stage here. Um, uh, 
if you've got any questions about this, feel free to type them in the chat section on the right hand side there. Give you a couple of minutes. Alternatively, you can always send the emails through later on to implementation, oh, sorry, oh yes, to implementation at zmed.com.au. Looks good. I'll remind you though that for you can get extra information from the ZMed website. Um, by, we've got our phone number up at the top of the screen there. We've got a big green help button where there's lots of um, guides and things there. We've got a lot of our in the support and training link there. If you hover over that one, you'll find a whole heap of our videos on previous lunch and learn. You can also send feature requests into this feature request link up at the top there. Uh, Remember to register for the future Lunch and Learn webinars. And as I just mentioned, they're on our website and you can send any feedback there. And also this client login, you can get more information or you can call our support help, help desk um, from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. every day, but Friday's just 5 p.m. Thank you very much for joining me today. And I look forward to seeing some of you again next week for the specialists uh, invoicing and receipting. See you then.